Almighty God, as we enter into your word this day, I pray that each one of us will hear from your word that which we need. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Last night, one of my favorite movies, and perhaps one of your favorite movies, was on It's a Wonderful Life. That's always a cue that Advent is among us, and Christmas is coming. I was reminded as I watched the movie, and I didn't watch the entire thing because I get up so early on Sunday mornings, but when he made it to the bridge, he was desperate. He was ready to end his life. He was going to jump. Everything in his mind had gone wrong with his life. His dreams, traveling, building things, gone. The SNL, the savings and loan, was facing default and ridicule because the deposit had been lost and stolen. He was afraid to face his family and his friends, and especially Mr. Pop. He was ruined. He was ready to jump. He was afraid of facing the world. The question I want to ask us today is, are we afraid to face Christ when it's our time to face Christ? When the end times, if the end times come while we're alive and Christ returns, are we afraid to face Him? Are we ready to greet Him? Or are we afraid? Here's some of what we can expect about the end times. Now, I'm not going to sit here and give you a timeline. Jesus said himself, no one knows the day or the hour. So I'm not going to say on Tuesday, you know, next year on this day, Jesus is returning. No one can figure that out. If God wanted us to know, he would have put it very clearly in his word. But there are signs and things we can look for to know that perhaps it's on its way. Just like this morning, when I got up and I was ready to walk buddy, I felt this wet stuff hitting my head. And I, I just had a clue that rain was falling. You know, I knew it was coming and, and it came. Well, here's some of what we can expect. I'm going to give you six quick things, and some of it's in the handout that I gave you, the scriptures that I printed for you today. You can take that home and read that later. Not now during my sermon. What are you doing? <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Number one, there'll be natural disasters and, and anomalies in the, in the heavens and in the spaces. I'm not talking about just an occasional earthquake or tsunami or hurricane or tornado. There'll be tons of things going on. Number two, there'll be wars and rumors of wars. I'm not talking about a little skirmish over in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even World War II was not great enough to... to Describe wars and rumors of wars. Number three, Jesus will return in power and great glory. Now, he also cautions us that some will come trying to declare that they are he, and they might even do some miracles. But they're just going to show up out of nowhere and start preaching and teaching and doing miracles. And some people will be deceived if they're not ready. But Jesus made it very clear when he comes, it will be in power in the clouds. There will be no doubt in anyone's mind. It will be glorious. And then there's the rapture. I put two different scriptures in there about what the church describes, what teachers describe as the rapture. Let me just read quickly one of those passages. Actually, I'll read both of them, uh, the part that Jesus said. Jesus said in Luke 17, I tell you on that night, 
Two people will be in bed. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding grain together. One will be taken and the other left. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Two different passages describing the same event. Now we don't know the order of these things because they're in different places in Scripture and God doesn't clearly give us a timeline, as I said before. But when Jesus returns, the church will be what is called rapture. So there have been times I've gotten up and gone places and I couldn't see anyone or anybody and I just wondered if I had missed it. Have you ever done that? We'll know. It will be clear. Number four, the, the thousand year reign. In the book of Revelation chapter 20, it says very clearly that an angel will come and Satan will be in prison for a thousand years. And those who have died in Christ will reign in glory with Jesus for a thousand years. And then after that, Satan will be released and other things will happen. But that thousand year reign is described very clearly in the scripture. And then finally, number six, I want to just mention briefly. There'll be what's called tribulation and the great tribulation. Two different things, but both of them horrible. You will not want to live through those, and if we do, God will strengthen us to make it as best we can. But they will come. Will they be at the beginning, before the thousand year reign, or after the thousand year reign? We don't know the order of things. Uh, all scholars do is debate this when they get together and talk about it. And there's three different views. The tribulation is before the thousand year reign. The tribulation is after the thousand year reign. And there's one or two people who think it's in the middle, which I can't imagine uh, during the thousand year reign. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot more to the end times. There's a lot more in Scripture. The book of Revelation is full of imagery and, and discussion about it. The book of Daniel and other books and passages. And so, beginning in January, the adult Sunday school class is going to go through the book of Revelation and discuss the end times uh, in detail, in great detail. So, uh, that will begin in January, and I see a few faces smiling and looking forward to that, so that's good. Uh, the rest of you, you can come if you want to. I think it's going to be interesting and good. But here's the thing. Even though I describe some things that are pretty terrible, earthquakes, heavenly disasters, wars and rumors of wars, tribulation, great tribulation, we don't need to be afraid because our hope is in Jesus Christ. I want to read again from... Paul's letter to the Romans, a passage today in the New Testament. He said this in verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice this isn't something that we can conjure up in our own strength, waking up in the morning saying, I'm going to be filled with hope today. I'm going to be strong in the Lord. I can do this. This is all the power of God working in us. And it's guaranteed because he's already given us the Holy Spirit. If you've been baptized, the Holy Spirit has already come into your life. And God has said that the Spirit will be with us no matter what. That is our hope. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in Christ. Our hope is in the Holy Spirit. So I encourage you, even if the end times don't begin next year, five years from now, or whenever, there will be tough times in our lives. We all face those. I want to encourage you to go to God in those times. Seek His coming, His strength, and He will be with you.
Almighty God, as we contemplate the end times and what that might look like and when it might happen, Lord, I pray that no matter what happens and when it happens, that you would be with us. That you would comfort us with your power and your mind, your grace and your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.